Hello and welcome to Watson's Weekly, which is up there. This is a quick roundup of what I think are the most important and interesting economic and commercial events of the week just gone. On the macro front, we saw some progress being made in the US-China uh, trade talks that were held in Beijing. It's a bit early to start celebrating, but at least they concluded amicably. Europe also got some good news on the labour front. Unemployment fell below 8% for the first time in 10 years. Elsewhere, France's uh, President Macron vowed to press on with his reform agenda, despite continued violent protests. There were some interesting developments on the tech front this week as well. Apple made some big announcements, firstly saying that you will be able to watch iTunes content on some new non-Apple devices, which I think is key if it wants to expand its reach. Given that it is intending to launch its own streaming service, it is vital that they get access to more viewers. It also announced that it would be cutting iPhone production by 10%, which many found disappointing. Other than that, Tencent continues to be on the naughty step as its games were, yet again, not among those given a commercial license by Chinese authorities who have created a massive games bottleneck. The shares have lost a lot of ground since the authorities started to clamp down last year. This was also a big week for the car industry, but not in a particularly good way. Car sales in China fell for the first time in 20 years, and UK car sales saw their worst fall in 10 years. Jaguar Land Rover got hit by the double whammy of being overexposed to diesels and China and announced big job cuts as a result. And Ford also announced that it would be wielding the axe to workers as the parent company is trying to cut $14 billion in costs. Other than that, Fiat Chrysler got fined $800 million for its part in the emissions scandal, although it didn't admit any wrongdoing. And Elon Musk announced the beginning of construction of Tesla's China factory. If it was a big week for cars, then it was an even bigger week for retail as they spilled the beans on how Christmas trading, uh, Christmas trading went. Tesco and Aldi were the big winners in supermarkets and, rest and, and in restaurants and bars. Also did really well with Harvester, All Bar One and Toby Carvery owner uh, Mitchells and Butler proving to be top dog. Although rivals Green King and Stonegate also did well. News on UK department stores was mixed as John Lewis and Selfridges did quite well, but on the other hand, Debenhams didn't. And to add insult to injury, the chairman and CEO were kicked off the board. This isn't really surprising given that they have had a disastrous tenure with the company's share price tanking by 90% since they started. I hope you found this roundup interesting. I publish a daily note on watsonsdaily.com, which gives you more detail on what I've just said on a daily basis. If you want to get access to this, as well as my weekly, monthly and annual publications that will help to turbo boost your commercial awareness, don't be shy, please subscribe. A subscription will cost you less than a double espresso per month. So, thanks for watching. Watson, out. <laughs>